Good morning. How are you this Friday morning? It's Mary Jad Wisiak coming to you live from Battleground, Washington, holding the Hope Central. So I'm home. I'm so excited to be home. I've, I've got uh, no travel scheduled for the next six weeks, and that makes me very happy. But what that means is that I am faced with uh, me, my reality. I, I'm not traveling and packing and running and going. I am uh, I am just uh, here in my house with Jack and my garden and my work and my responsibilities. And I'm struck by how uh, it's, I kind of have this re-entry funk where I just kind of uh, don't do what I need to do a lot of times. But um, that's where I am today. And, and that's okay, right? I mean, we all go through these things. And again, um, that's... That's life, right? So that's where I am. Not that you're interested, but just thought I'd tell you. So, but what I want to talk about today is really, uh, it is kind of connected with where I am because it's all about, I want to talk about self-acceptance. What? I know. Um, I recently ran across some paperwork that I had done, um, some writings that I had done, and some uh, work, quite frankly, that I had done on myself. And I was going through these writings and I realized how much of myself I was rejecting because I thought it was wrong and I thought it was bad and I thought it was not good enough. And I thought I needed to be healed from being myself. And I felt kind of bad for her. I thought, wow, how where did that come from? So, you know, I thought about it for a while and I think so much of, um, so much of my life and maybe yours is about looking and seeing what's wrong, right? And identifying with the places that are wrong and trying to fix them as opposed to really looking at who I am and saying, this is pretty awesome. And you have a lot to offer the world and who you are is by design, first of all, and there's a lot in there that people need. So I have to tell myself that sometimes because I uh, have been told my entire life that I talk too much, ah! that I'm too loud, that I'm too big, that I'm too, uh, too boisterous. My mother used to call me boisterous and bold. Oh, I was so bold. I used to think, gosh, if I were just meek and mild, and maybe if I were, uh, if I were more demure and more ladylike, um, my life would be different. Well, it sure would be. It'd be totally different. It's because that's not who I am. That's not what I am. That's not how I was designed or created. I was made to be bold and boisterous. And you know what? I'm okay with that now. I wasn't though for a really long time. And I just kept thinking I needed to be different and that I needed to be better and that somehow I needed to figure out how to be somebody else. And I never could because there isn't anybody else. So I felt like a failure because I couldn't figure out how to be somebody else. Is any of this making sense to you? And I have to say it contributed to my illness. It contributed to my, to my addictions. It contributed to all of this when I didn't ex just accept me for who I was I didn't not only accept, but cherish me for who I am. So often in recovery, we focus on what is wrong in order to fix it. And rightfully so, right? Sometimes when you're, <laughs> when you're out of control and you know, the illness is in charge, we got it. Maybe take some steps to make sure that you're safe and that everybody around you is safe and that your life is as good as it can get. There's a whole industry built around helping us have good lives. That's the behavioral health industry. But so often in our addictions and in our recovery from our mental illness, we so identify by, <clears throat> by, by our diagnosis, right? Every 12-step group we go to, we identify ourselves by our illness. And that's okay, right? There's a reason for that. But it really, some, for a long time, I had to kind of go, why am I identifying by my brokenness? Because that's where I connect with all the other people in the room. And that's where I acknowledge, and it's a statement of humility for me. And also, um, 
in our in our in our uh, in our uh, what do you call it illness in our mental illnesses. What happens is if you don't have a right diagnosis, you don't get the right medications, you don't get the right med, you don't get the right um, you don't get the right anything. Come on, let's face it, it's all label driven. And so th those of us uh, who are on uh, uh, who those of uh, folks who are on uh, disabilities, right? You got to have the right paperwork and the right labels in order to survive. And that's, I get that. We, there's a place for that in our lives, but it's, it's, it's what we experience. It's not who we are. It's what we experience. It colors who we are. It flavors who we are. It, um, it certainly uh, influences how we look at the world, but it's not who we are. We are born by design exactly the way we are. And there's lots of messages coming this way, my way uh, this week and that say this sort of thing. And so I, that's just kind of what's on my heart to share with you is that we are exactly the way we are. But there's another thing that this leads to when we identify ourselves by our brokennesses and that is uh, learned dependence on the system. Learn dependence on being broken. I can't do that. I have a disability. I can't go to work. I'll lose all my benefits. I can't do that. I don't know how. I can't do that. I don't want to, <laughs> right? And we get used to people taking care of us. We get used to um, we get used to people catering to us if we because when we were ill and we need support, we get it. And then, but then that time comes when we have to stand on our own two feet. I'll give you a for instance. I go to the gym. I have a trainer because you know I'm not going to go otherwise. I've been going to the gym now for probably, I don't know, three or four months. And here's the thing. I have no idea. If I went by myself, I have no idea what to do because the woman hands me my weights. She, she determines how much weight I'm going to have. She takes me to a machine. She adjusts the machine. All I have to do is get on and move that particular muscle. I have learned to become completely dependent on her, which is good because she's very good and she's very helpful. However, um, I would like to go there and be able to kind of do that by myself. So she's on vacation this week. And that's my goal is to get to the gym a couple times this week and actually figure out how to do all that stuff myself. We have this learned dependence in our lives. So I would, I would, you know, I would invite you to kind of look at your life and see, first of all, where are you defining yourselves by your weakness and where are you, um, dependent on something else around you that maybe you don't need to be, that you could kind of stand on your own two feet and say, well, maybe I can't do this perfectly, but I could do this and I can learn how to do it better. So that's, um, that's my message for you today. I hope that, that you're, um, doing really well. And I hope that you have a fantastic weekend planned that has something to do with, uh, you know, taking care of yourself and not, um, not the broken you, but the, the part of you that's there by design. The part of you that is, uh, well, maybe we're broken by design. Oh, now there's a thought. Oh, I got a heart on that one, right? Maybe we're broken by design. Who knows? We all have uh, roles to play in this life and we all have messages and purpose and uh, maybe we're not broken at all. What do you think of that? I'll have to think about that one myself. But anyway, so my name is Mary Jed Wisiak, and it's Friday Morning Live, and I am going to go and uh, have some fun this week. I'm doing some gambling. Ooh, not too much. And I'm um, going to work in my yard this weekend. So I hope that you have a fantastic weekend, and stay hopeful. Thank you. Bye.